Every year, our state lawmakers head to Santa Fe to work out the budget, and every other year, they consider larger issues impacting our state. That was the case during the 2023 session, and inside, a group of up-and-coming journalists got their first taste of the legislative process. During a recent Facebook Live conversation, New Mexico and Focus political correspondent Gwyneth Dolan caught up with three of those young reporters to ask about their impressions from the session and about some of the legislation they covered impacting rural and indigenous communities. You were all local news fellows. Bella two years ago and Megan and Jeanette just finished this nine month fellowship program in local newsrooms. And you're all new or pretty new to covering the state legislature in Santa Fe. I wanna ask you first, how did that go? What is that experience like for a new reporter? Uh, Bella? I was up there probably four or five times. Um, and and yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was good, you know, um, talking with more experienced reporters and getting tips about, you know, navigating um, the website and how to like track bills more easily. So it's good. Experience. Well, I'm sure all of our viewers who have ever tried to look up a bill feel your pain <laughs> trying to navigate that website. They do keep making it better. And and even during this session, I noticed improvements that were making it easier. Jeanette, while we were up there, you, one of the things you covered was the Native American Voting Rights Act. And this is uh, the first of its kind in the country, a part of the election code devoted specifically to this. Um, what will that do? So one of the things it does is a lot of Native communities are rural, especially here in the state. So what it does is it creates the opportunity for Native American voters to be able to vote at their tribal building or an official building in their reservation. It also creates more, it also allows them to use PO boxes because a lot of, you know, tribal members, they don't have a permanent address. There's nothing like that on the reservation. So they rely on PO boxes to get mail. And before now, that was not you know, considered an official address to vote. In the in the past few years, we've seen moves in other states to restrict voting, um, to uh, bring early voting down a little bit, to restrict or make it more difficult to apply for absentee ballots, things like that. This was entirely different. Uh, what's it about? Yeah, the main goal of this is to expand voting rights accessibility and um, generally just make it easier for people to vote. So there are a few different things in this. Like you said, the Native American Voting Rights Act is in this. There are a few other clauses like requiring ballot drop boxes at every county, making sure there's at least two of them, creating a permanent absentee voter list so people don't have to re-register. And I think another really important one is for people who are convicted of felonies, uh, once they're released from a detention center, they're allowed to vote, which they currently can't do if they're on probation or other things like that. Uh, Bella, the you are an indigenous affairs reporter at New Mexico in depth. And one of the things you looked at was a proposed tribal education trust fund. What would this fund have done? Yeah, so tribal education is um, heavily reliant on, um, in part, on state grants that are given out annually, um, or I should say that tribes can apply for annually. Um, and for a couple of reasons, tribes um, often have trouble spending all the money in time. Um, and that's made it difficult for tribes to build um, sustainable edu education programs and um, actualize this vision of educating their own children, which there's a profound need for, especially in, in our state. Um, so this year, there was a bill that would have um, created a tribal education trust fund. Um, basically, the revenue generated from the fund um, would have provided reliable and, and automatic funding um, for tribes to build truly community-based programs, um, focusing on you know, language, college and career readiness, um, and, and many other priorities that vary from tribe to tribe. Um, but ultimately, the, the bill sponsor sort of ended up tabling it um, with the idea of working in the interim and, and coming back um, with a, a, a bigger ask funding wise next year. Jeanette, you reported, we both did, on a bill to support the creative economy. And this had, uh, this had supporters in rural areas, especially because a significant amount of the money is, is required to be given to rural communities. Is that right? 
Yes, and I think, you know, one of the biggest things when we're interviewing, we wanted to really just nail down what exactly is the creative industry. And I know it got kind of confusing and they had to go back and revise it because, you know, we talk about creative industry here in New Mexico, we talk about film, but the film office has its own thing. So that's not a part of it. It's really just local artists. I mean, you know, we talk about, you know, game designers, visual artists, dancers, architects, ceramic artists, you know, they would all be able to benefit from this program. Uh, on another topic, Megan, there was some work done on disaster relief. Uh, and you have done a lot of reporting on the fires we saw uh, last year. Uh, what did the legislature get done on disaster relief? There were a few different measures passed for disaster relief. Uh, like you said, last year we had a massive fire season in northern and southern New Mexico. We saw the biggest fires we've ever seen in this state. One of the first bills that the governor signed was sending 100 million in zero interest loans to northern New Mexico so they could repair infrastructure that the floods largely washed out and the state expects that'll be eventually paid back because that fire was caused by the feds and they've taken responsibility and paying for it. There was also um, the Black Fire in southern New Mexico, which hit around the Gila National Forest. That was the second largest fire behind Hermit's Peak Calf Canyon in northern New Mexico. They're getting the budget allocated $2 million for them, which is actually $1 million less than what um, lawmakers who represent those areas requested. Um, and they did discuss a few issues with why that $1 million was cut. And Senator Crystal Diamond actually brought up that in the budget, there's a million dollars set aside for a, a university telescope, although nobody requested that through legislation. So that was cut. The McBride fire, those sponsors also requested just over $18 million for their for repairs for their counties, um, but that was cut down to um, just under $7 million. Well, I want to thank you all for coming and talking to us about what you've done. We hope to be hearing a lot more from you. Uh, this coming year. Thank you so much for being with us.